everybody welcome back to the channel so today i thought i'd do this video talking about my experience attending download festival 2023 um to give you some context it was my first ever download festival that i attended and there's some tips and tricks that i wish i'd known beforehand mind you i did do loads of research and there's a couple of things that i quickly figured out and, and learned along the way and there's definitely going to be some things that I'm going to be changing when attending next year again so without further ado let's get stuck into the video. Okay to begin with I'm just going to talk a wee bit about accommodation and getting to and from download. Me and my brother we just decided to stay at a hotel we stayed at the Penta Hotel which is right beside Derby Station it's like a one minute walk. It's literally right beside it, which was good. Download runs a shuttle bus, which is £30 for the whole weekend, or it's £12 for the day, I believe. The prices might be different for next year, but that's what we paid. Uh, we got the weekend pass, obviously, because we were going to and from on multiple days. The journey normally takes around 30 to 40 minutes getting to download from Derby Station. However, on the Thursday, it did take roughly about an hour. I think this was because we ran into a bit of traffic with more people trying to get into the festival. Um, obviously, Download being a four-day festival this year, you only had one day to camp and set up rather than the typical two, which I believe normally happens every year. So I think that's why the traffic was so bad. Plus, it was a sold-out festival this year. I think it's the first time Download's been fully sold out. So a bit of traffic was to be expected, uh, hence why we got an early shuttle bus. So once the shuttle bus left us off at Download Festival, we had to wait roughly about an hour and 10 minutes um, before they opened the gates to let us go in and collect our response. Collecting the respond was stressful to say the least. I couldn't add my download ticket to my Apple wallet, apparently. I don't know if download requested this or if there was a glitch in the app. A lot of people couldn't add their download ticket to their Apple wallets. But Ticketmaster apparently reassured everyone that if you download the app and you view the ticket beforehand, even if you get no signal, the barcode will still pop up because it's one of those moving barcodes. So I don't think screenshots were going to work. So I'd obviously done this. I thought it's going to be okay. I've viewed it loads of times. I even turned off my mobile data, turned off my Wi-Fi, and checked it beforehand and everything was working good. As soon as I got off the shuttle bus and I was standing in the line, I went to check the Ticketmaster app and nothing was showing, uh, like literally nothing. And then I was starting to say I had to log in. I was getting no signal at all. So I couldn't view my ticket, despite what Ticketmaster had said beforehand. When I went up to collect my wristband, I thought this was going to be no issue at all because common sense would have told you that this was going to happen. People were going to arrive up with no signal and they would have some kind of backup plan. No, <laughs> they had no backup plan at all. Um, they told me I had to try and find signals somewhere around the part of the village that we were allowed in. So I went to the corners, walked all around. I was getting zero signal. I tried this for a good 10 to 15 minutes. I went back to them and then they told me to go down to the bottom of the hill, which is where we had the line up getting off the shuttle bus. And there was a Ticketmaster box office there and that the guy or girl there would be able to help. So I went down, there was already 15 to 20 people roughly waiting there with the same issue. And there was zero people at the box office to help and there was nobody. There was a couple of kind of the stewards that were that were working at Download Festival, but I mean, they didn't have a clue. Like, I don't, it's not their fault, obviously. You know, they were just there to direct people, but obviously they didn't know how to fix this, this Ticketmaster issue. So I kind of peeved me off a wee bit because there's no one there um, and I wanted to get into the arena. There's actually a guy on the phone to Ticketmaster giving off, asking for a refund, saying this is a joke, blah, blah, blah. What I tried to do then was to log in to the Ticketmaster Wi-Fi. They did have a code up on the Ticketmaster box office saying to log into this Wi-Fi. That didn't even work. The Wi-Fi didn't work at all, which is strange. What happened, but I managed to get 5G for I think it was 20 seconds, I logged into to my Ticketmaster app and then the barcode started scan showing again. 
So I legit like sprinted up the hill, went past a wee security woman who checks all the bags and handed it to the people, handed out the wristbands and the scan that I was able to get the wristbands. But that whole process took the guts off half an hour where they should have just allowed you to add it to the Apple wallet or whatever happened to a paper ticket, you know, an actual ticket that you could just bring to them and, and say, here, scan that. So that's something that they definitely need to look at next year. Me and my brother decided we would leave around each band's encore because we didn't want to have to wait for a couple of hours just to get on the bus to go back to the hotel. I'm so glad we done this because on the download chats, I heard that people had to wait roughly four hours to get even on the bus, which would have been an absolute nightmare. Um, we got little enough sleep as it was, so, you know, I definitely wanted to make sure I was on the bus. Um, if you leave around each band's encore when you're getting the shuttle bus, I don't think it's going to be an issue. Um, there's no queuing at all. We were able to just walk right on the bus, get back, and it was grand. Uh, download does have loads of shuttle buses lined up so there's like a wee platform there's a shuttle bus there there's another one ready to go right behind it once that that one's full and then there's like another two three four five buses depending on how many's left beforehand ready to go and then obviously by the time they come back again um they'll continue doing that all night so they'll go to the station come back to download go to the station come back to download and download has said in the past that if they need to put on more buses on that particular night they will do so as long as you leave around each band's encore there's just going to be no waiting if you want to watch the encore be prepared to wait so for this section i thought i'd talk a bit about actually the arena <clears throat> the part that probably most people care most about personally i was impressed with the layouts the main stage looked badass it looked really really cool the opus stage was a fairly decent size still too small for what it needs to be i'll get to that later on uh, the avalanche stage which is the bigger tent i really liked it i seen stage champs in it it's the only time i was in that tent but it's pretty good uh, the sound was great i had no issues with it at all Dogtooth stage is probably the weakest stage out of all of them. Not, I'm not talking about lineups, by the way, I'm talking about sounds. I went in to watch Monuments in it and yeah, it just sounded terrible. You could barely make anything out. Plus they have these like pillar things. So if you're standing at the back, you can't see nothing. It's just terribly laid out. I think they would need to, to relook at that. And it's, <clears throat> the stage is at the top of the hill and everyone's kind of, standing at a downward slope so your view is even worse which doesn't make sense I, I don't get it at all facility wise there was a decent amount of water taps slash stations probably not as much as there should have been because the weather was so so hot and um, especially on saturday and sunday like it was really really warm on the sunday that was the only time I ever experienced a queue at the water stations. The Thursday, Friday and Saturday, I didn't have to queue at all. The Sunday, however, they could have done with an extra few um, because I think people were starting to cop on and realise that they need to start drinking water, otherwise they're going to pass out, which some people did. Like walking through the crowd, you could definitely see people on, on the ground in agony, either sunburnt or dehydrated. So. I mean, there was no shade provided. I've seen people, uh, you know, kind of complaining about that. But what can you really do on a outdoor festival? You know, if you wear some protection, wear a hat, wear sunglasses, drink loads of water, I think you're going to do just fine. Um, I did, and I, I was okay. And, you know, I knew other people at the festival and they've done the same thing. They were just fine. So you kind of just have to be proactive and keeping yourself fit and healthy while the weather's hot. So, uh, the toilets, right, I can only talk about the male toilets because obviously that's the ones I used. Uh, the female toilets, from what I've heard, were okay. I know in last year's in the We Download chaps, chats, sorry, I'm part of, people were saying that there was never enough female toilets. I think this year there was more than enough. Um, you know, I've, I've heard a lot of females saying it's a big improvement. For the male toilets, I see no issue at all. Um, I have heard P 
people say that men were weighing and going to the toilet basically anywhere, which which is true. Um, I think the staff and the security did do their best to stop it on the Thursday and Friday, but I think once Saturday and Sunday happened, they just gave up. There's actually a security guard we were talking to and he just directly told us that he just doesn't care anymore where the men wee or go to the toilet because there's nothing he can do to stop it, like they're gonna do it anyway. However, there was no need to start weighing anywhere in the festival because there was urinals free. Even if you thought there was a queue, it wasn't for the urinals. I don't know why people were queuing. It must have been for the port I never had to use a port anyway. I just always went and done my business at the hotel. But the urinals were always free. So this whole thing about people weighing, it's just people being disgusting and being hounds. But I think there was more than ample urinals anytime I went. I didn't have to queue once. Um, on the Sunday, there's definitely the, I think people call it the piss mud. <laughs> there's def definitely some of that happening. Um, to go into the urinals that I mainly use, the exit was now the entrance and the exit because the festival goers had basically made the ground too damp to walk on. Um, the merch dance, right, I've heard people talk about the merch dance saying the line was too big. I completely agree. It took about like four to five hours to get in the merch dance. So, you know, it's just too long for a festival when you're looking to watch music. Mind you, I don't know if there was room for more merch stands. Personally, I don't think there was. You were, it was tight enough for room in the festival as it was. You know, I think there was the guts of 110,000 people there. So putting in more merch stands wasn't feasible, but maybe looking into making the site bigger to allow for more facilities, like an extra merch stand and maybe to give people a bit more room walking from one stage to the next, because that was definitely another issue. The OPA stage was way, way, way overpacked. Um, essentially you had this, I'm going to say the stage here and then you had like a walkway which was never a walkway unless you were in straight away. The walkway should never be full of people by the way um, because I've seen disabled people trying to get through on wheelchairs and it was just a disaster for them. You know I felt so sorry and um, they were having to like shout to get people out of the way. And the lines for food there was none um, that I could see anyway. I do have an allergy to nuts, so I did tend to stick to like one or two vendors that I knew were 100% not free because I don't like to risk it. I don't fancy taking a reaction in the middle of download. It wouldn't have been too good. So yeah, anytime I went to get food, there was no line at all, but I did eat relatively early. Like I did think ahead and eat around three o'clock and just get one bigger meal and not done with the whole rest of the day on that evening and if I was hungry I could just get something back at the hotel so that was no issue at all so maybe that's a wee tip for you is if you are looking to get food at Download Festival just eat a bit earlier and save yourself time in the lines. Pricing for food then it's, it's expensive it really is. I have heard about people getting ripped off from vendors charging double or sticking an extra zero on at the end of the transactions and stuff so Anytime I went to pay for something, I would either always ask to see the card reader to make sure it was the correct amount, and I would always try and enter my pin when I could, just so I could always see the card reader and make sure. It's expensive, so if you're looking to go, make sure you bring loads of money for food because you're gonna need it, especially in the heat. You need to eat and keep your energy up. So I did talk a bit about traveling from one stage to the next. Definitely going from main stage to the OPA stage was the worst. Obviously they're, they're the two biggest stages. Um, getting to the front in both stages, this is something that was a lot better than what I actually thought. What Download had done this year, because I've read that this was the first year that they've actually done it. There was like a front barrier, similar to what Metallica done for the Golden Circle and the security managed the amount of people allowed into this front section in front of the stage. As long as you timed it right, because they did close it off at certain points when it got too busy. So as long as you timed it about maybe 20 to 30 minutes before the main acts were going on to play, you always got in. Um, I know there was people kind of waiting on the other side, waiting to get into this, I'm gonna just call it the Golden Circle section and security did let them in in dribbles for the headliner, but 
If you're there early enough, then you were allowed to get in, but that might mean missing one of the bands you like or leaving a band early. But yeah, I, I, most of the bands I were watching were on main stage anyway, so I kind of just watched the band, left the golden circle part, went and got my jacket or something that I needed for the headliner, got a drink, went to the toilet and still had time to get into that golden circle part. So it's really only 20 minutes to 30 minutes before the headliner that they start to close it off. Uh, a cool thing that Download did do this year, because Metallica was playing, I don't know if it was Download or Metallica, but one of the two legends done it anyway. On the Thursday and the Saturday, which is the, the days Metallica were playing, they chose people to go into the snake pit, which is the part kind of in the middle of the stage. Uh, we asked the security guard, kind of picking people out on the Friday, what was it about? And he said, if you basically stand near this wee secret entrance door, um, they'll go out and get people. So he went out and got us on the Saturday and we got to watch Fever 333 and Ice Nine Kills from the, the Snake Pit. And it was so cool. Like Ice Nine Kills is one of my favorite bands. Um, I'll insert some footage here now. <laughs> thing about getting in the golden circle part I noticed some of the bands playing earlier that day actually came out to watch Metallica set this was on the Saturday by the way on the Sunday I noticed it I never really copped on that people were doing it on the Thursday and Friday but definitely on the Saturday and Sunday some of the bands came out when the headliner was playing the watch so I actually got to meet members of Parkway Drive Simple Plan and Polaris and also the, some of the guys from Eddie Breville were there as well watching Slipknot. So that was good. I'm going to talk about some things that I'm going to be changing going to download next year. To start off, I've managed to get RIP next year. So me and my brother were staying in the, the cabins. There's the reason why I want to do RIP. I kind of talked about these points earlier. Getting into the festival, um, you were waiting an extra hour and a half to two hours every single day before they allow you to walk through the village to get into the arena. Being on your feet for that amount of time, like it all starts to add up. Uh, the traveling to and from Download Festival, I know it's 30 minutes, but by the time you get up, walk to the bus station, you know, get some food, like you're get, having to get up earlier than, than what's really necessary, you know, if you were camping or if you were staying in RAP. So, you know, with, with losing all that extra sleep and not actually being allowed into the village, you know, after after the bands have finished, having to leave super early to catch the bus and missing the encores and stuff, to me, I think camping and staying on site is worth it in, in that aspect. If you don't want to have to wait in lines for buses, you have to leave early at the end of the evening, you have to arrive early to the festival, otherwise the bus could end up being late. So all those different factors went in, that's why I've decided to go to RAP next year. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope it's gave you a few things to think about for attending Download Festival next year. And yeah, hopefully I'll do a couple of more videos about Download throughout the year and maybe do a vlog next year, maybe an RAP vlog, perhaps. Yeah, but thanks for watching the video anyway. Cheers and see you next time, bye.